First video in the new apartment. This looks so white. That's a window. That is a wall. All right, we'll do, we'll do, we'll do this question mark. This is my microphone, I forgot. Welcome back to the channel. My name's Mark, if you don't know me. This is the Reading Ramble for July. It's a, it's a little desk fan. This is what I've been thriving off of. Fallen Rufus's philosophies on one should accept the temperature no matter what it is. I do say, hydration is key here. Isn't this cool? This is L desk. This desk is the only thing that's new in this apartment. Everything else was secondhand. I've been waiting for this for six years. Yeah, I'm gonna forego, you know, what I said I would do. I think it's just good to look back on. If you're curious about what my goals were, then by all means, eh, whatever. By all means, feel free to check out the last reading ramble. I have finished, I guess, two books this month. Um, which honestly is fine. We're gonna, I'm gonna talk about the books I'm reading because I'm about halfway through like three or two or whatever. The, I guess just throwing it out there, Either Or by Kierkegaard, I have, I'm like 50 pages in. But I don't know, I haven't, whenever I've sat down to read, it hasn't been much uh, with everything going on. There's been chaos, so that's fine. Um, I finished Executive Power, the next one, the mid-draft book. This one was very politically charged. It has made me a lot more intrigued in the whole Israel-Palestine thing. I'm a very out of the loop person. I don't really read the news because I find it depressing. And so my metric is if my friends tell me about it or my family tells me about it, then it's pretty big. I know this issue and I, I never really paid much mind to it. I'm aware of it. But this, the whole turmoil of which side and their reasons for this, it's made me very fascinated it. And as someone who is naive, there's no bias uh, toward either side, if you will. Like it's reflective of what I think is the current political state. Political state as in the time of everything, not state as in the, like, a country's and a, a territory, a state. Just want to be clear. That's one book that I finished. The other book was Musonius Rufus, Lectures and Sayings. Stoic philosopher, I've never, I hadn't heard of him um, until I came across something about his, his view on, I guess, eating and indulgence. And I thought it was very fascinating because my relationship with food is something that I'm working on changing and, and moderating more. It was a very short read. The, there was like eight, nine lectures and uh, some sayings at the end that I thought were, were pretty cool. I don't know, there's, there's a bunch of highlights that I've made. I think if you're into Stoic philosophy, definitely give them a read if you haven't already. If you want to start Stoic philosophy, maybe this is a good place. You know, this book is, is pretty short. Again, links to the books in the description. It's pretty short. It's, it's succinct and to the point. Uh, and it's a good intro to it all, I guess. Sound really resounds. I might have to set up a recording in my room or something. Some notes, I forgot about that. Really underrated stoic. I, I would agree with that. I realized I was just leaning out of frame. <laughs> That's awkward. I was really sedentary for about three months after I hurt my shoulder and moving. And I've been running seven, I'm on day seven now of just runs every morning. It hit me at a good time. A lot of stoic things and minimalist things tend to intersect in, in, in a lot of ways. And if you know anything about either of those philosophies, then I'm sure you can be like, oh yeah, of course they do. You know, minimalism is have as little as you can, but have as much as you need. You know, to me, it's this L desk. Was it necessary? I guess not. But have I been wanting it for six years? Absolutely. I work from home and I find it to be a necessity for work. The TV, it's a really small TV and it's $30 second hand. And I think it's necessary because I want to experiment with dividing what I watch TV on, which is a vice of mine, as I've talked about before in, in these videos, versus my laptop. Virtually no TV on the laptop, all on the, the TV. Xfinity Wi-Fi gave me this free box thing. And I was like, you know what? That's a fascinating experiment. If you're curious, let me know. But that's the topic for another time. Stoic philosophy is kind of similar in the sense that, you know, let things happen as they happen. Don't don't get, don't do more than you need to do. Don't get more than you need to get. Do not focus on building wealth just to build wealth. And Rufus puts a lot of these things very bluntly. The note I have on here that I remember is furnishing a house. And that's why I kind of talk about the desk is just get the basics of what you need. Don't go ham. And I think I'm doing a good job at that. Everything has a purpose, right? I want this to feel like an apartment, like a home, but I don't have to get a couch. I really wanted a couch, but then I was like, I don't, you know, I don't need a couch, dude. I can get a chair that I can chill in. This is a really nice desk chair I got secondhand, and so I canceled my order for another really nice desk chair. And so it does the job, and it does the job well, especially compared to all the cheap chairs I've worked on in the past. So that's just one of those things where it's like, if you can get it for $50 on Facebook Marketplace, do do that, you know? And then lastly, I wrote very hard hitters when it comes to the sayings. A lot of philosophy sometimes, and this is what 
I, I kind of slow down with Nietzsche uh, will to power because a lot of it is read and think, read, think. And you don't get through very much without thinking in a way. Either or is a little bit of that. Although I'm trying to be more conscious about how I read, it's not important. At the moment, I think I'm in this middle ground of philosophy where I'll read something totally new and be like, oh, that's an interesting idea. But then I'll read something that I've experienced myself Epictetus, when I read that book a year or two or years ago, it would have been like, oh, wow, you know, just let whatever happens, happens, enjoy things as they come. And I kind of see the benefits of that and the fallbacks and the, the, the consequences of trying to do things or trying to control things that I can't control. And then I read Rufus saying it and I'm like, I totally agree with you, bro. And I love the way you're saying it. Kierkegaard, some of the things where I read them and I think you just put into words a thought that I have had and have never been able to put into words. So philosophy is really cool to connect with in that way. And I'd recommend reading philosophy if you, if you haven't already. Just Stoic philosophy is probably the easiest to start out with, especially with books like The Daily Stoic or whatever by Ryan Holiday. Okay, so yeah, now the other book I said I was gonna read was Chrono Trigger. I read about the foreword <laughs> and it's really cool. I wrote notes here. I don't want to get myself wrong. Yeah, I think this book is going to resonate with me a lot. This guy, he is a translator and he moved to Japan uh, after learning Japanese and he played Chrono Trigger as a kid and he was afraid that playing video games as an adult, he would become jaded against video games. That the magic of them would be ruined as an adult, but then when he replayed Chrono Trigger, he realized the magic is still there. And that connects with me on the Japanese level, the wanting to move there, working in video games and most significantly in this moment, the idea that I'm afraid I'll jade myself if I keep making an objective out of video games. That's my note on toxic productivity video if you haven't seen it already. This light, is it doing anything? Not a bloody thing. All right, cool. I'm gonna talk more about my Japanese reading at the end, but the two books that I've been reading interchangeably whenever I've been sitting down the last week or so. Discipline Equals Freedom by Jocko Willink. I've listened to his podcast before, similar veins of David Goggins, and I'm really glad I got the book. It's a very short book. It, it reads almost like poems, and, and if you can read it in Jocko's voice, if you will, from the podcast, it kind of like hits. A lot of the notions are just nice to be conscious about. One thing that I've really been resonating with from it is the idea that, now, if you don't know Jocko Willink, look him up. Ex-Navy SEAL, proponent of discipline and all that. Actually, two things. One thing I've really been weighing on is his wake up early thing. So I've been really leaning on that in the mornings, just getting up and doing the run, because I know that the rest of the day, if I get the run done, then then I can take a nap in the day. Then I know that if I feel poopy or crappy later in the day, it's not because I missed my run. It's actually something underlying. And that's been a big theme with me. One thing that has been a catalyst in the past, i.e. missing a morning run, leads to a bad day. But if I can get rid of that one catalyst, then I can look at the bad day and think, okay, well, it wasn't that that missing that run. So cool, I can look at other things now. Each section, I don't want to call them chapters, each section has a theme. One of them is like the battle is not over when you complete the objective. It's over when you complete the objective and you, you make it home. Those are my own words on his idea. Cause I think when I last, I guess, did keto and working out, that's the one I was thinking about this morning. The last time I tried the, the morning daily workout things, I met the objective and then I just backed down. But the objective now, is to never stop and is to always change the plan. I'm not gonna be on keto forever, but don't just go off keto, right? Change it. If I do the morning runs and I wanna switch at some point, then okay, replace it with something, right? The last book here that I'm reading, I'm 32% through, Ready to Run. I don't remember why I came across this. I think I was researching um, orthopedic books. That sounds weird. I injured my shoulder back in May. Now I'm terrified of injury and I know that I run incorrectly. That's something I've been aware of for a while. This book is, I have some notes on it, I think. There's a call out for lack of movement in daily life. I write code for a living now and I make videos and uh, you know, it's true. <laughs> or for someone in my shoes, especially in the shoes, not in, anyway, that's kind of a pun. And I, I love the call out of the very blatant call out of like, your body's not meant for this yada yada. Stuff I've heard before, but it's honest. It's a little verbose. It, the first part of the book, you can probably just like gloss through. Cause I think a lot of the points are important, but they're just like, some parts just felt a little verbose. But once you get into the principles, I'm on principle three right now, I think. The first two were walk with neutral feet. This is why I got the book. When I went to PT for my shoulder the first time, I talked a lot about with my PT about your feet, duck feet, neutral feet, and that she was like, you need to be with neutral feet. It's amazing that ever since then, <clears throat> I'll watch people walk or run. So often I'll see straight left foot, angled right foot. And I think 
that's you know driving your right ankles moving on the pedals but yeah so walk with neutral feet and the second thing is wear a minimalist shoe which i've been i was doing for a little bit they're in my u-haul box i didn't bring them with me and i've been meaning to get new sneakers for a while so i'm gonna get some flat-footed shoes but pretty much there's all this i want to say science back he doesn't quote papers he he says doctors and whatnot all this research about how walking with a flat-footed shoe is good and the thing here that's crucial i think it's a little extreme but what really gets me is that i don't know if it's a dorsiflexion plantar flexion dorsiflexion my editing mark please correct me the dorsiflexion i don't go up that much i can't and i need to do it better you know to work on my my squats or anything which is something i've learned in the mobility classes and parkour strengthening the heel cords and having your heel elevated so if you your foot's flat, right? If your heel's up because of your shoe, which mine is, I had heel contusions as when I was younger. And so I like the bones in your heel were like really squished together and micro bruises or something. I don't know. I'm starting to think it was a little bit of BS now. It's just in pain, but your heel should not be elevated above the foot. And that's actually harming you. You know, the whole barefoot thing, I'm, st I'm still not fully sold on the barefoot running, you know, hit with your forefoot first, but all this stuff about heel striking. And what blows my mind, and I confirm this by Googling it, there's no research that says an orthotic shoe, so like if you get like Dr. Scholl's heel gels that elevate your heel, there's no research that says those will fix your foot. They'll make you more comfortable, but they're not gonna fix the underlying mechanism. And that is wild to me. And it's one of those things that falls under the categories of Things that capitalism created that don't have any actual backing. Like the whole, like to me, it's akin to fat is bad for you. It's not. I mean, it fat is nine calories per gram, carbs is four, but fat itself is not bad for you. Fat in excess is bad for you. But if they say fat's bad, then they can sell you more sugar. Same thing with the shoe. Oh, this will be better for your foot, but it's not gonna fix you or make your running better. I've also been getting super into mobility lately. So this is, all these dots are connecting and I'm really glad I found this book. I went to the, an orthopedic the other day to get my right ankle checked out. He was like, yeah, you definitely sprained it, but you know, you, you're good to walk now. The swelling might last for another month or so. Prescribe PT, so I'm gonna start working on that and I wanna start running properly. I I think I enjoy running, but the part I don't enjoy is is the pain. And for a while, I would push through the pain. And after injuring my shoulder, it's like, maybe I, maybe I shouldn't do that. <laughs> maybe I should find what's causing the pain. I don't know, like shin splints. I think I have some right now and I wanna not have them. This is like the fifth time I've started running and within a week they come back. Anyway, that's most about running than it is about books, right? Uh, last reading ramble, I said something about reading Toradora in Japanese. Guess who is still 1% through? I've resumed Wanikani, Boon Pro is still going well. I'm on track for N4 at the end of September to take the self-assessment like I did with N5. That video was supposed to come out mid July, but I want to get the Seattle vlog out. Wow, I'm so behind. The Japanese thing has made me realize that I read so little. Like I'll sit down to read every day consistently like I have been, but it's just so little. And I have these Japanese short stories. I've been meaning to read one a week, but I think I'm going to keep this insight. I've been trying to watch more Japanese TV, even if it's not like a dedicated thing. I still do want to be reading Japanese, but I think, I don't know, it's, it's, I thought it would fall into my reading habit just fine, but it's not. But I need to start reading. That doesn't mean I shouldn't be reading. Maybe I should start reading on my laptop because there's an extension called Yomi-chan where you can look up words you don't know. And a lot of people swear by that. Because like I'll recognize a bunch of kanji, but I'm still missing 80, 75% of the kanji in the words. So next month I'll finish Ready to Run. I'll finish Discipline Equals Freedom. I want at least one Japanese book finished even if it's online and it's short. And I'm just gonna focus on Toradora still. I see no reason otherwise. I got a Japanese DS game. I don't know, we'll see if I play that. Then again, I have Arceus on my Switch, but I don't have a dock. I got sidetracked. I do wanna like, start reading either or again. It's just so easy to bring around the Kindle, man. And then boss fight books, yeah. So that's, you know, no new books in the docket. All my books that I wanna read in person physically are on the way. Look, this haircut's weird. Anyway, thanks so much for watching. If you're curious about anything, let me know in the comments below. I have a question. Let me know what you're reading. I'm always curious to hear book recommendations. Someone left some recommendations in the last one that I logged. Shoe Dog by Phil Knight. That came up in conversation a short while ago that has, I want to move to the top of my list. Whoops. So yeah, Shoe Dog, top of the list now. Once I finish Discipline Equals Freedom, I think that's what I'll go for. Yeah, definitely looking to read a lot more this month. I settle into my schedule, so... Thanks for watching yet again. Have a good one. And as always, don't forget to stay Ugh, awesome.